In this video, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about optimizing your game inside of Unity to make it super performant without losing any quality. And before we get started, I just want to thank you all for your love and support as we hit 500 subscribers. And with that said, let's get started. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using this nature pack light that I downloaded from the Unity SS store. And if you guys want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description. So here's how it looks with a bunch of trees and stones. And I've just set them all inside of this environment game object here. I've kept default settings on the directional light to make things easier for you. And also for the main camera here. And also for the lightings except for one little change here and I've changed the source from skybox to color here. Also if we go to edit project settings quality, I've also kept this to its default settings as you can see here. Alright. Alright so now if we hit play, let's hit play. And open up the stats here you can see we get around 30 to 40 fps which is very low considering our scene also we can reduce the set pause calls and batches here so let's just start optimizing the game firstly our scene has too many shadows as you can see here and they're all at the highest quality level so let's first select the direction light and we can just go ahead and change the shadow type to hard shadows here and we can reduce the strength to like 0.75 to get that soft shadow effect alright so the next thing we can do is go to our graphic settings let's go to edit project settings and here we can see our scene is kind of too perfect so we can reduce the quality a little bit so instead of changing the settings we can choose this medium preset and it will do just fine. So let's first get rid of this anisotropic textures and also make sure the NTL thing is set to disabled. Now let's go down and here make sure the shadows type are set to hard shadows only. Also you can just bump up the resolution to medium. Also make sure that the shadow cascades is set to no cascades. Alright and Let's also disable this V-Sync here because we won't be needing it. So let's see how it looks. And it looks awesome still. So we haven't lost any quality yet. Also to improve the performance, make sure your texture maps. Let's get the texture maps here instead of textures. And I only have one. So make sure you enable this generate map maps on your texture maps. And we could also play around with the max size here. So let's see. Let's keep it at 512 for now. And also enable this use crunch compression. It will help reduce the overall size whenever possible. And now let's try this out. Let's hit apply. And I don't think it changed any quality here. So we can go maybe a bit too low. And it starts to lower the quality so let's just keep it at 512 awesome so now we can select the main camera and here as you can see we don't need to look much far ahead it will just increase the number of objects to render so let's keep the far plan at around 300 let's try 300 for now or maybe we could go a little less so 200 yeah, I think 200 will do just fine. Alright, so now it's time to test things out. Let's see how we're doing. And as you can see, we are already 50 frames up than 4. But there is still so much we can do to improve the performance. Like reducing the batches here by static batching as most of our scene is pretty much steady. So let's select the environment. So this is all static so let's select the environment here. Now either we can select some of them or just mark all of them as a static for everything. So hit yes and now they will be marked as a static. Let's hit play. 
and as you can see there are only 78 wedges now and we saved 260 by static wedging cool so if we were to have many static objects in our scene we could do the same for them all right so another cool thing that you could do is let's exit play mode let's select the canvas here and here select all the ui elements that are not going to be click on so like all the images here and inside the image component disable these ray cast targets and maskable too if you want to so that unity doesn't keep checking for ray cast on these objects every single frame all right and also we could select the canvas and disable this pixel perfect here because it doesn't make any difference whatsoever and if we were to have like uh, rigid bodies in our scene so let's add rigid bodies to our players here so if we had like these rigid bodies i'm just gonna set them to a schematic for now what you need to check is you have the uh, collision detection mode set to discrete and not continuous which will save a lot of physics calculation time for unity anyways i don't need them right now so i'm just gonna remove them next thing you could do is if you're building for android devices go for the shaders and select the mobile shaders and select this vertex lid it is supposed to be one of the most performant shaders in unity for mobile devices and also you could use this for pc if you want to but if you want to keep the shadows you might want to try the vertex lid with directional light which renders the shadows also and if we hit play as you can see it improves the performance a bit more but for this i'm gonna use the standard shaders so let's get rid of this and also you could get rid of the reflections on these materials because we don't want them to be reflective awesome and now for the most important and the frustrating part the lighting settings so first let's select the directional light here and we will change the mode so we could either select baked or mixed here so in our case we will select the mix because we have some dynamic objects like these players which will kindly move around in the scene theoretically and we only have one light anyways let's select mixed and leave everything as is go back to the lighting step first let's select the players here and just disable them for now because we don't need them in the baking process so firstly let's change the lighting mode to subtractive so let's change this from shadow mask to subtractive and i'll just show you what it does in a moment when we have our players in the scene now we can play around with all these settings here i'm gonna keep this light map resolution to as low as 10 or maybe 20 will do just fine so you could just play around with all these settings if you want and also i'll set the light map size to 512 pixels for now and make sure the compressed light map is enabled because it will affect the overall size of the light maps after being baked and also let's change the light mapper from progressive cpu to gpu here for faster baking time you can play around with all these settings if you want i'm gonna leave them as is for now and hit generate it will take a while so don't worry and when it's finished it kind of looks a bit weird it's because they don't have the light map UVs, but we can generate them inside of Unity. So let's select the models here. Let's select all of them. Go to inspector panel and inside the model tab, scroll down and you'll see this generate light map UVs. Enable this and you can see a bunch of settings here. So you can play around with them if you want, but they are good as default. So let's apply and I'll just import everything back here and nothing changed. So yeah. It's because we have to regenerate the lighting so let's just go ahead and leave everything as is and hit generate lighting and it will take a while and voila here it goes so it looks awesome but our player character here seem a bit off they are more bright than the rest of the scene 
and in order to fix that go to the lightings tab find ambient color and it will only affect our players because they are the only dynamic objects here so let's keep this somewhere around here so the player matches the background let's hit play now whoa that's crazy fast we are now hitting around 500 fps but there's still some changes to be made so let's close this go to physics and make sure the auto sync transforms is disabled because we don't need it all right and also let's select the materials and if possible get rid of the smoothness set it to zero and also both the specular highlights and reflections too so let's remove them because we don't need them anyway and also let's enable this gpu instancing to save some cpu power and i've done the same for this one let's hit play again and here you can see we are getting more than 500 fps now which is awesome lastly you could select all these sprites and make sure you and make sure you disable the generate map 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 maps for them because we don't need them because they are not in 3d space and also we could enable this use crunch compressions and play around with this max size let's try to keep this as low as possible so i'm gonna go to as low as 128 pixels without losing much quality and it would save us a lot of memory And if you want to check this out, let's hit play. Open up the profiler, control 7. And here if we click on rendering, click on this rendering tab here. And you can see all the size there, textures take up. So you can see all the stuff here, how many batches are there and how many did we save and everything you need to know. And here you could see the CPU usage, what's using more of the CPU's power by using the player loop drop down and not worry about the editor loop cause and if you want me to go deeper into this let just let me know in the comment section and finally let's talk about the subtractive mode so if i move our player around the scene you can see the shadow move with it but if we i select one of the static objects and try to move it the shadow stays where it is because it's using the back lighting while the player uses the real lighting. That's why the subtractive lighting mode is useful in cases like these. And if you want me to go deeper into lighting settings, let me know in the comment section also. And also if you want to help me making these videos, support me on Patreon. And until next time, see ya.